think we will start, Robert. What do you think? I mean, we have a full schedule. Um, so. Yes. Okay, then uh, I would like to welcome all of you to the very first uh, ET Advisory webinar. Uh, it's very exciting to use this type of communication and interact with you all, uh, customers and um, other with interests of non-linear performance pricing. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. I'm a bit too quick. Um, at Eat Advice, we talk a lot about orchestrate your cost, and um, and in today's live webinar, we will present the non-linear performance pricing, or we call it NLPP, uh, which is one of the components how to orchestrate cost. Uh, today's webinar is scheduled for 60 minutes, and as I said, um, it will be recorded, and, and you can share it and look at it again with colleagues and friends. We will use the Q&A button during the event, so you can raise questions through that functionality Q&A button. Uh, we will uh, answer the Q&A after the presentation, and, and if we don't uh, we'll be able to answer everything. Everyone, we will respond on emails. And uh, for today's uh, webinar, I'm glad to present Robert Munch, that is the founder and the CEO of Safarian, and the company that have developed this NLPP software. Yeah, welcome, and nice to meet you all here in the webinar. So, um, and uh, also, uh, I will give you a little bit background on, on, on the Safirian and Siemens relationship. It was signed um, in September. That's correct, Robert? Yes. So Siemens and Safarian have signed a partnership between each other. And the NLPP software will be part of the Team Center product cost management portfolio. Uh, for your guys or your for your that doesn't have team center product cost management, you can use the NLP P software as a standalone um, because you can interact with the PCM, but it's also very very a good standalone product as well. And it comment to that and and uh, uh, ET advisor is of course a partner of Siemens and. We have a partnership in the, the domain product cost management. So therefore we also is a partner for Safirian and we'll, we will be driving develop the market for an NLPP in the Nordic and with the Nordic enterprise customers as well. Anything to add, uh, Robert, before we start your presentation? No, Tony, thanks a lot and um, you pretty covered it all. And um, for all the attendees, um, as Sephirion, we are only doing these NLPP topic. So um, we don't have a bunch of different tools or whatever. We are fully concentrating on this approach and methodology for the past uh, 12 years already. Um, the approach is still not mainstream in the industry, but it's picking up a lot of momentum and that's exactly what we want to show you today. So Tony, if there's nothing to add at the moment, I would start with the presentation. Yeah, uh, please do so. Um, and um, yeah. Okay, Looking so we will give time. you, we, I, I want to give you first a overview and introduction about what it's all about. Then we are going to take a look on the tool so you get an idea um, how such a thing looks like, and just a couple of simple walkthroughs so you get an impression. And then later on, we hope to convince you to give all this a try with your own data. So um, why did Siemens contact us regarding our technology? Um, Siemens is going to extend their portfolio with a top-down costing methodology, which is NLPP. And the traditional way is the bottom-up costing with product cost management 
um, module from Siemens. And uh, the traditional way is uh, recalculating cost breakdowns, uh, collecting all the machine rates, uh, wage numbers, and so on. I think most of you are pretty familiar with this approach. Um, it's a very extensive approach. You're focusing on the part cost consistency. So you really want to understand if the price, the costs of a part are correct. Um, you really want to understand where potential savings are coming from. Are these coming from because the general overhead is too high or the machine cycle times are not Id ideal or whatever. And um, based on these analyzers, most companies go into negotiations and try to find a better pricing. Um, the thing with the bottom up costing approach is that if you're looking on a complete purchasing volume, depending on the company, you're able to cover between 10 and 40% of your purchasing volume because it's quite a lot of work. And Siemens was approached by a lot of customers where they asked, hey, what to do with the re remaining 60 to 90%? So what should we do? And NLPP, on the contrast, is a top-down costing approach and it's very fast. So you can analyze hundreds of part numbers in seconds. Um, we have a complete portfolio, part portfolio view and we're interested in understanding the price consistency of a whole part portfolio. We identify savings potentials as well. And we're focusing on the value of the product. So the main question is how much value do you get for your money? And NLPP assesses these prices by how much value you get for your money. And how is this done? The main difference between bottom-up is the bottom-up approach really separates a product into all its component, components and looking into all the details, how this thing is manufactured, what material is used, and so on. In contrast, the top-down approach of NLPP concentrates on performance drivers or price drivers, which characterize a product. So for example, we have some batteries over here. From an NLPP point of view, we are interested in things like charging time, capacity, volume, and so on. Whereas in bottom up, we really want to understand, okay, how is the anode or the cathode um, done and uh, manufactured? And based on these, performance drivers and the bunch of data about the different types of batteries you're already buying, we use a lot of mathematics to find out how these parameters impact the price when you change them. So how much does the price change if the charging time gets better by one second? And the result of NLPP is such a target price formula. And this target price formula models the relation between the parameters or the performance drivers you're interested in and the target price. And the interesting property here is that with such a target price formula, you're really calculating the value price of the product based on your selection of the parameters. And it's important to understand that you define what value means, not the supplier. So if the supplier is selling you a battery with very low charging time as a very good product, but you are not interested in charging time, it's just not a good fit. So why should you pay for it? And that's exactly what NLPP will reveal. It will show you parts where things don't match. Good. So what are classical use cases with NLPP? So first you can discover unknown savings and potential price cuts. And um, you can do a hotspot analysis through ho your whole part portfolio. So even if you have hundreds of 
part numbers you are analyzing, um, it's no big deal to find those hotspots where the money is. Um, it's very quick. So if you're gain, gaining a bit of experience, it takes really a couple of seconds. And the nice thing is as soon as you have such a target price formula, of course you can use predictive costing and predict what a new part you never bought before will most likely cost or be the, the pricing of the new part. And this cuts down the turnaround times to ask um, suppliers to send over specifications and all these things because you get very good predictive results um, with the target price formula. To give you an idea how such an example looks like, for ex here we have electric motors and over here you see the, the use parameters for electric motors. In this case, um, yeah, we have some type if, if it's an AC or DC, so we can handle textual things, the electrical output and so on, whatever is of interest to you. And in this example, we analyzed 208 small electric motors. The overall purchasing volume were around 2 million euros. We identified roughly 20% potential savings. And the interesting thing here is 70% of these 20% um, were covered by 10 part numbers. So it was very easy to identify exactly those 10 part numbers where you should put the priority on. And the 10 part numbers are just 5% of the overall part portfolio we took a look at. And going down to exactly the important 10 part numbers as quick as possible, that's the big time saver. So you won't waste your resources and capacities in areas where there's nothing to gain. Another um, example is about turn parts. Here you see um, the parameters used with the turn parts. And in this example, we analyzed so-called top 100 turn parts of the customer, which means they are always looking after these turn parts. They were the major parts and they said, well, Robert, you are not going to find anything. We know that we have it fully under control. However, we identified roughly 12%. This time the savings potential split it over 30 part numbers. So there were really no extreme outliers or part numbers that were fully out of or, or totally inconsistent. That's true. So the, the client did a pretty good job. Nevertheless, we identified quite a lot of potential savings and um, which then was implemented. How does this work, such a hotspot analyzer? So how do we find out if the target price, the price by value differs from the actual price and how can we identify what will be the correct price? Well, this side you already know. And what we do with such a target price then, target price formula is then we visualize your product portfolio with such a graph. And we will see this one in, in a minute in the tool. And you always see your actual price on the vertical and the calculated target price on the horizontal. And the target price over here is calculated by this target price formula. Every dot is a part number, and you see we're adding three benchmark lines as well. And now you can immediately see that this part here is bought for, let's say, $63, but the software tells you the real value of the part is something around $18. So you're paying a lot more than the real value is. In contrast here, you have a part where you pay $22 and the software tells you the value you receive is more like $42. So this has a very good price performance ratio, while this guy over here has a very bad 
price performance ratio. And you see the benchmark lines here, which give you another visual feedback how the part numbers of the portfolio are related to these benchmarks, to other parts. And as humans, we are able, we are very good able to take a look on such a picture, even with a couple of hundred dots and immediately spot areas where things are suspicious or where product relations don't fit into the benchmark patterns and so on. This works much better for us than taking a look on pages of Excel sheets with hundreds of hundreds of numbers that really doesn't help anyone. The question now is where do these benchmarks come from? Um, so we are not delivering any benchmark data. We are not claiming to have a benchmark database, which is um, daily actual with all worldwide supplier prices for the parts you're interested in. That's just impossible. Hence, we are calculating the benchmarks out of your data. And how does this work? So the blue line, what we call the target price or the market benchmark has the property that 50% of your part numbers are above this benchmark line and 50% are below the benchmark line, <coughs> sorry. The best practice line just uses a different split. So 75% of the part numbers are above and 25% are below and the worst practice or too expensive line just vice versa. The nice thing about the, doing benchmarks like this is um, those benchmarks are very realistic. And it doesn't help you if someone is claiming, yes, we have a great benchmark database and we can do a benchmark for you. And we tell you, yeah, in Brazil, you have some suppliers that are 30% less expensive. And um, then you can say, yeah, okay, but what do I do now? Maybe the supplier is not fitting or it takes too much effort or whatever. So this number really doesn't help anyone. But this is your existing part portfolio and we show you where the benchmark is for the understanding what you have from the market. So what do I mean by this? The prices you have from your supplier for the parts you buy is the information you have from the market. That's your understanding of the market. If you only have one supplier for, let's say, turn parts, your understanding of the market is just this single supplier. Even you know there might be 500,000 worldwide, you only have information for your parts from this single supplier. So we take your information, your data, and tell you how the benchmarking looks like there. Then the big question is, okay, let's assume you have such an NLPP result and what are you doing with it? Do you show it to a supplier? How do you use the result? Of course, you are not going to use the tool and um, show it to the supplier because then um, everything I'm now explaining to you, you would have to explain to the supplier and later on they would just say, well, that's super interesting, but you know we can't follow you, so why should I discuss those target prices, whatever tool is spitting out, um, I don't care. So no, you won't do that using NLPP results works in a different way. There are some classical patterns in an NLPP result. And for example, let's take a look on these two things here. So these two dots form a vertical line, which means you're paying 65 for this one and something like 12 for this type. And the software predicts both part numbers should mostly cost the same. And this is the case when the input parameters to the target price formula here are the same. Of course, you get the same target price. 
And another nice property of the target price formula is if the input parameters differ by a small amount, the target price will be different by a small amount too, which means dots that form a vertical line have to have mostly the same specification. And then the question is, of course, why do we have two parts with mostly the same specification, but which differ by factors in the actual price? That doesn't make any sense. And what you would do, let's assume these are parts from one supplier, you're exactly picking these two part numbers, go into a negotiation, put it on the table and tell the supplier, well, look, the technical specification or the things we care about differ by only 1%, but the price is differing by 500% or by 50%. Can you please explain why? Because we don't understand. So with NLPP results, you're really turning around and let the supplier explain to you unlogical price differences. And the thing here is there is no good answer. So the supplier could argue and say, yeah, well, but we do a lot um, over here and this is not fitting on a good uh, machine and so on. And you could say, yeah, very interesting, but you know, I don't care how you do it. If it's not the perfect machine, then have a look and get a perfect machine or whatever. Um, but you don't seem to be a good fit for this kind of part because your pricing is not competitive. And there are many different patterns you can take a look at. Uh, we have support in there to automatically identify such patterns so that we really get your focus to the most important parts of your portfolio as quick as possible. Good, so before jumping to the tool, I just want to give you an overview about the, the UI structure so you are not lost while I'm guiding you through the tool. Um, NLPP has two main views. The first one, is the what we call data view. And it's split into three areas. Over here, you see all your imported data. Down here, we have a six step workflow where you start on the left, make your way to the right, and the software is guiding you to the next step and always telling you if you can continue or not, and if not, why not? And then we have over here a clusters list, which means you can cluster your imported data by whatever criteria you want. And behind every cluster, there's a target price formula. So in this case, we have all the products in one cluster, and then we split the cluster by supplier. So we have a supplier one target price formula, supplier two target price formula, and so on. So you're really free how you're slicing and dicing your data and depending on what you're interested in, there are no strings attached that you can do it. The second view is the result view. And over here you have the interactive graph, again, actual price, target price calculated by target price formula. We see the three benchmark lines, we see all the dots. In this case, the dots are colored by a criteria like sourcing region or whatever you want, again, then over here, we have a table regarding the benchmark potentials. So this table first shows you the baseline of your whole part portfolio, 3.6 million euros or dollars in this case, roughly 60,000 parts. And then you see the simulation. What happens if we are moving all the dots to the green line? Then we, the overall purchasing volume would go down to 3.2 million or 460,000 savings or 12 and a half percent. Or what happens if we moved everything to the blue line or the red line? So these are the numbers. And then of course we can tell the software only take into account parts over a benchmark, which means they are more expensive and keep the ones below. So whatever feature and thing you can 
think of, I'm pretty sure we already implemented it. And last but not least, down here, you see a detailed results by part numbers. So for every part number, you will get the worst, the market, and the best practice benchmark value. And the data can be exported, reused in different IT systems. And so you can really feedback the results of NLPP it, into your business processes. And this is something you can do with the target price formula as well. And that's exactly what Siemens is doing. We are going to show you how this is done um, after the product demo. So any questions so far? If not, I would go to the product demo so that you can get an idea how this thing looks like. And I'm not going to dive into all the different features, but um, just make a quick walkthrough um, until we get a result. So you get an idea how quick this can be done. You see, this is NLPP after it started, it's empty. Down here, we have the six step workflow and we will make our way through it now. Okay, let's import some da data. Robert, Robert, yeah. We have one question from Petra and uh, Petra, I have a... Sure. Mm. Ah, perfect, thank you. Yeah, I have a question regarding um, yeah. if we take the motor example that you showed us. Yes. Um, I mean, let's say we would define those parameters, which are the key pattern parameters from us, then from a, from a value yeah. perspective. And then we have um, a number of parts that we are yeah. buying. Um, how, how would we then get those parameters for all those motors into the system? Yeah, I'm just going to show you in the first step. Okay, perfect. Okay. <laughs> perfect. Okay, good. Timely question then. Yeah, perfect. All right. So just, just give me 10 seconds and you know. All right, thanks. <laughs> and um, uh, just for your information, we are not so many attendees. So if you would like to ask a question, uh, we do it in a more interactive way. So raise your hand and I will uh, open up so you can ask a question like Peter did right for okay. Good, yeah, so to exactly jump on this, so the first step is that we import some data and I'm going to select a file and the file is nothing else than a simple Excel file and um, stored as a CSV file, which is a pretty simple textual representation and that's the interface we're currently using. So um, pretty simple in here. You can um, configure how your data looks like and so on, not, not very um, interesting. I'm just sk skipping it. And okay, so you get a preview. What do we have here? We have a part name, a supplier number, a supplier, a sourcing region, a plant, a price in euro per piece, a quantity, a weight, a diameter, a torch with a surface type. You see this is textual and a property if the part is heated, yes or no. In the second line, we have some units, which is okay. We can carry around and everything looks fine. I'm just going to import the data. Good. The software creates a all cluster by default. Here you see all your data. Down here, you see step one is done. All the other steps are locked and tell me, okay, step two um, requires some care. And step two tells me, well, um, the software doesn't know where the price column is and the software doesn't know where any parameter column is. So it just doesn't know how to calculate at the moment. So the second step is we are going to define the type of our columns um, here in. So we have all the columns down here Everything is master data alphabetically sorted. We get some information about the structure of our input data, like how many numbers, zeros, negatives, strings, errors, empties, different values per column and so on. So this is just a rough information to, to understand the data. And now let's go through it. So part name, supplier, number, supplier, region, and plant, we can keep as master data. So the software carries around the information, doesn't do anything, 
with it, it's mostly interesting for you. So the first one we have here is the um, um, price. So we change the type here on the different um, types we have for different master um, types, then a price and the numerical price driver, a category and the quantity. So I say um, import the price. We can configure how the error handling is done. I just skip those values. And then I say convert it. Good. Columns are column types are color coded. You see this in the background. Down here, we already got some more um, information. So one error is done and so on. And what you see here is immediately a plot of all the price data sorted from the minimum price in there to the maximum price. And we already see we have some extreme values over here. So I'm not saying outliers. Outliers always sounds like it's an error, but this is real life data. It's not an error, it's an extreme value. And of course the software has to handle such a case. And then you see the average price of your parts. And this is the median price, which means that's exactly the middle element of all your records. And 50% of your records are within the red box. So we know 50% of the parts cost between 36, 24, and what's that, 97, 55. So this gives you a first idea how the structure of your input data looks like. And you are able to do a first data quality assessment. Let's continue with weight, diameter, torch, and width. So going to change the type of these four into numerical. And then you can see what's happening down here. So I convert it and the steps are enabled. We get a warning because the software tells us it doesn't have any quantity information and without quantity information, it can't calculate any potential savings because it can only assume one part or one piece is bought. But of course we have a quantity column as well. So let's change the quantity column here or specify the quantity column. And as soon as we do this, we get the, dot, uh, the steps green here. Here we just get an information that one value was removed because it's not a number or some trash in there. So there's no need that you clean up your data perfectly in the beginning. Yeah, and this is how the distribution looks like um, for the quantity. So here you see, for example, um, much more extreme values, which is a pretty common distribution of quantity values, or the weight, the diameter, the width, uh, uh, to, sorry, torch and width of your parts, and so on. So, and last but not least, we have the surface type and the heat treated, and these are just categorical values and good. So that just needs to be done once. So we tell the, we told the software now, what kind of columns do we have? We haven't selected out of this candidates, which one we want to take into account in a calculation. So let's close this one. Step three is fulfilled automatically. Um, NLPP is able to deal with several price and quantity columns. So you might have your actual price, a quoting price, or bottom-up calculated prices, whatever. Uh, you can select which price column it should use. Step four is to edit your products in here. I think that's not so interesting. So let's jump to step five where the mathematics happens. So you see all the um, price drivers we are able to use now. And let's select quantity, weight, diameter, torch, and width. And then we are interested in 
finding out how a heat treated part where we have 127 of differs in price from a non heat treated part. Just give me one second, please. So, sorry. I should have announced it that I just had to open the door. Otherwise, my son would stand outside one hour and he's not so happy about that. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry. And um, yes, yeah, so we are interested to find out how heat treated parts differ from non heat treated. So let's include this. Good. Um, since we have a record in here where all the data is missing. NLPP recognizes this and tells us, well, uh, you have one record and I can't calculate with it. So I'm excluding this record to enable the calculation. And now we can run the calculation for the target price formula. We are using 325 products in here. And NLPP requires at minimum, it's a, it's a rule of thumb around 25 products and then the mathematics start to work. And um, so we have 325 here. And I'm going to calculate the formula pressing this button and you can follow it down here. And good, that's it. That took 1.9 seconds. And what do we see now? What you need to know is that NLPP, it uses regression methods in the background. That's the mathematical concept. But we are not doing just simple regression analysis like you have in Excel or you can read on the internet or look up in Wikipedia because that's not working in most of the cases. So we have implemented six different regression methods. And the one you will find most information on the internet, which is not published by us, is about LPP LSM. That's for linear performance pricing least square method. But we implemented five different methods, additional, and an LPP is able to automatically find out which method to use to gain the best result. So in this case, we have a nonlinear model with a QR method. Here you can see how it compares to the other ones. Down here, you have the information, uh, sorry, the target price formula. Internally, it looks like this. So there are a lot of uh, significant digits necessary to model the case. Yeah, and what we can tell you as well is how big is the impact of each parameter. So not every parameter impacts the price on a change yeah, in, in, on the same amount, but it's different. So we know diameter has the highest impact than weight with and the least impact is by the property heated, yes. So if a supplier is telling you, well, the part costs so much because uh, you want to heat treat it, you know, yes, heat treat it has an impact, that's okay, but you can't explain 15% price difference by this. So this is clearly proven out of the data. So and then we can already switch to the result. And here you have the graph. You can hover over these dots and see what the current price is and what the predicted price is. Uh, we can zoom in and out and all the fancy things. And over here, we have the savings table. Currently, it's showing us um, what happens if we move those dots down to a benchmark line and pay more for the ones above. And I'm just going to show a couple of features. but. Let's take a look on the potentials only of those parts above the blue line. So I switch here and say, okay, I'm interested in the savings only. And as you can see, we have about 240,000 euro potential savings in here. 
And we now want to identify the part numbers with the highest absolute potential saving in here. So the question is which of the 324 products we include here gives us the most money if we care about it. So if I'm now asking you, okay, what's your guess? Most people are guessing on the dot which is far away from the benchmark line. Well, the first thing is this dot here is 34% away from the benchmark line. You see this in the second forward line. But if we zoom in down here on the lower price range and we take a look on such a thing here, that's 34% as well. So don't be fooled um, because of all the dots in here. Um, the candidate with the highest potential saving might be borrowed in here. But no worries. We are calculating the absolute potential saving by part number already because we have all the information. So it's really uh, simple. And I just sorting the target price column by absolute potential and saving and click on the line and the dot with the highest potential saving is centered here. This is the one which gives you most money out of those 240,000. And then you can just go on and click your way through it to see where all these dots are. So this already gives you a clearly prioritized list of things to care and um, not necessary to dig around and try to find any interesting points in here. So what else can be done? You saw the products um, colored in my screenshot. So let's color them by um, supplier. So we have some pretty many suppliers in here. Here you see the color coding and there you see, okay, the green supplier seems to be a pretty good in here. So I could click on those parts and see where they are located in comparison to all the rest of the parts. And yeah, so the supplier makes a pretty good job even for the higher price parts down here. Um, it is always below the green line. There's one outlier in here. And maybe we can take a look on this one with the supplier and ask them, well, this, this one here really doesn't fit to all the pricing of your other parts, what's up there? And so on. So this is mostly um, it to give you a rough overview about how such an analysis tool looks like. And the NLPP analyst role would now dig into this result, cross check things, find interesting hotspots and collect a sequence or a collection of hotspots to be discussed with suppliers. And the nice thing is that you have such an information advantage over your suppliers that you really can control how the negotiation is happening. How, in what area do you want to go? And um, what are the target prices? You know what you should pay upfront and so on. So this is a very big information advantage we are giving you at hand. Good. So I would like to switch back um, to PowerPoint to just let you know how this thing will be integrated now in the PCM in the Siemens solution. So if you're using PCM, what will be able in a couple of months, I think um, in the next release will contain the interface between NLPP and PCM. So, the first step is you would use NLPP to run an analysis and get this target price formula. Within PCM, you have a classification, a material classification, and you can now assign such a target price formula to one of these classes. And 
make it a way able as a new calculation option within PCM. And if you're selecting a driving shaft now, you will see the input form and you can select the NLPP calculation, which then will use exactly this target price formula to estimate or to predict a most likely price. And this is all done without doing any bottom-up calculation steps. So even if you don't have an idea how this thing will look like, or not, it's not engineered in your CAD system or whatever, you only have a rough specification what the thing should have some yeah, requirements and so on. Just hack them in and you will get a first pretty good and precise price prediction. So this slide shows the <coughs> integration workflow between NLPP and PCM. So in the first square <coughs> up in the corner, can you see that you need to run the NLPP formula first? In the second one, you will push that over to PCM and create the material classification. In this case, in or in this demo, it's a driving shaft. Then we will select that afterwards in the in the short movie that we will see, and then we will use the inputs to drive the NLP formula inside PCM. So here we are in PCM, and we create a new part, which is the driving shaft. So we load and we post an image. We search for the driving shaft in the material classification. We add some uh, needed information about surface treatment, heat, <coughs> heat treated or something. We add the diameter, torque, length and weight. Move over to basic data. And here we have the new classification for NLPP calculation. We add some volume and we will now see the price per piece with the 5,000 volume. Here we change the volume and you will immediately see the impact on the price. And here is the formula used from NLPP inside PCM. Now we go back, we change the diameter, we fix the price, and here we see the new price. We add the length, and immediately <coughs> we will see the impact on the pricing. Now we take away the, the heat treatment, and we have a decreased cost. So this is how it will look like inside PCM when you work with NLPP directly. Thank you very much, Mats. Uh, great video. This will end our webinar. We will uh, put the webinar on our website so you can at any time revisit uh, the webinar. And you will also find the webinar on our YouTube link. And um, the channel, you say, YouTube channel. Uh, and I can see that's no uh, question raised, so therefore we we'll end this webinar. I will thank you, Robert, Mats, and all attendees for joining this webinar. And uh, looking forward to uh, hear and see you uh, later on. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs>